Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev. Today we're doing something a little impromptu. We'll be working on a prototype that could possibly become something more later down the line. But for today, I'd like to simply bring the idea to life, prototype out a basic version of it, and see if the idea is even worth pursuing. So let's get to it, shall we? Now this idea comes from a game jam theme I happened to come across recently. The theme was simply companion and for whatever reason the word sparked inspiration. And since I unfortunately don't have the time to participate in game jams officially, I thought I'd explore the concept of companions and the idea it sparked here on Let's Dev. So, imagine you have a hyperactive dog, a tennis ball, and a slippery floor. The dog would never stop chasing the ball, and for better or for worse, there's some thing that the dog can run into. Make sense? Well, we'll start building it anyway. First thing up was toying with the camera. I am both fascinated and confused by GameMaker Studio 2's camera, and I thought this prototype would give me an opportunity to mess with it. For now though, I started with keeping the camera between the dog and the ball. Then I moved on to setting up the dog with manual control and tying the ball to the mouse. After testing the camera a bit, I was ready to see how it would do under more extreme conditions. So I got to work on the dog code. Using a mixture of alarms and states, I had the dog define its target direction, which is based on the ball's position at that moment, and sprint in that direction. Then it would choose a new direction, again based on where the ball currently is, and sprint in that new direction. Rinse and repeat. It was at this point I realized that tying the camera between the ball and the dog was a pretty bad idea. With both objects constantly moving, it became way too disorienting. So instead, I made the camera its own independent object that could be controlled with WASD. To be honest, I'm not even sure camera control was necessary for this project, but I really wanted to work with the cameras. But for now, we had a stable camera and I could focus on the gameplay. I added code we've used before to have the dog slowly turn towards its destination. This because having it snap in its direction wasn't very organic, and once I got the math right, the slow turn also made the interaction a little less predictable. And there we had it, a hyperactive dog, a slippery floor, and a ball. Now full transparency, I went into this prototype with no real plans, and so everything was basically improvised based on what felt right at the time. And at this particular moment, I decided to add uh, something for the dog to crash into. I don't know, maybe it's a cat, uh, other dogs, whatever they were they would slowly crowd their way towards the ball as well. I mostly did this not to suggest that they were endangering the ball, but mostly to give them a concentrated direction to move in. And so now we had a hyperactive dog, a slippery floor, a ball, and something for the dog to run into, which would only be destroyed if the dog is in full motion. And technically this would be where we'd end the episode. We've accomplished our goals, but I thought we could do more, so I did more. The gameplay loop was originally, how many things can a dog run into before time runs out? But then I thought, what if instead of time, it was simply until the dog actually caught the ball? So I set up a distance check for the dog. If the dog reaches the ball and the ball is still in a quote unquote free state, then the dog grabs the ball away from the player. I then realized that might be a little too sudden of an end, so I added a quote unquote struggle system to get the ball back from the dog by simply mashing spacebar. And after a brief cooldown period, the ball was again open to being grabbed. I noticed one downside to this interaction, and it's that the ball instantly transports to the cursor when freed from the dog. I tried a couple of things, including setting the mouse's position, but with little experience in this area, nothing really worked, so I did a little band-aid and had the ball move towards the cursor when freed instead. The end result is a little buggy, but hey, it's a prototype. So before I caught it on this session, I wanted to do something with the camera, so I thought I'd add screen shake to whenever the dog runs into something. It sounded easy, just shake the X and Y axis of the camera a bit through a script or an alarm. Turns out it's uh, not that simple. I spent a good chunk of time messing with the settings only to get nowhere. So as always, I turned to the documentation and managed to actually figure it out by accident. It seems that camera control of all sorts are done through specific functions, so by manipulating the X and Y coordinates first, then telling GameMaker, hey, do this to the camera, I got the screen shake to work. Although it still needs some work. But nonetheless, we did have screen shake now, which actually gives the contact between the dog and the red block things much more punch. So there we have it, a hyperactive dog, a slippery floor, a ball, a reason to not let the dog get the ball, something for the dog to run into, and screen shake when said dog runs into said things that they can run into. Whew. 
Again, I'm not sure this would go beyond this point, but I do like the direction it could possibly be heading. And if you agree and would like to see it continue, be sure to let me know. But for now, that's where we end today's episode of Let's Delve. So remember that if you like this video or enjoy Let's Delve in general, be sure to hit that like button. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode. And again, be sure to leave your thoughts on the prototype in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.